Nigel, President Trump is worried that Theresa May's Brexit deal with the EU will stop Britain from making a deal with the United States. We know that you've been speaking with President Trump about this. Mm. Why should he be concerned? Well, I think two things, really. Firstly, um, President Trump is a believer in Brexit because President Trump believes in nation states. He believes in democracy, right. not in global bureaucracy. So he's always wanted Brexit to happen. And I think... It's no great secret right. uh, that he feels that Mrs. May's negotiating position, frankly, has been pretty weak mm -hmm. from day one. Second point is one of the things Trump always wanted to do from day one is to show the world that because he believes in America first, because he believes that some trade relationships around the world are unfair, doesn't mean he wants to close America off from the rest of the world. Right. He's for trade deals if it's with countries that don't undercut countries that have equivalents. And here's the problem. Mrs. May's deal ties us into what's called the customs union, ties us in to all of the European Union's rules on external tariffs and all the rest of it, right. and effectively means we will not be able to negotiate a free trade deal with America for many, many years to come. And I think Trump, and yes, I did, I did speak to him about it, mm -hmm. and basically this is a big lost opportunity for the both of us. Do you know America is the biggest investor in the UK, right. the biggest overseas investor, and we are the biggest investor from overseas in the, in the USA. The, 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 there is a wonderful relationship between our countries that could get even better. And so you said that the EU is, is basically starting a cold war with the United States. What, what did you mean by that? Well, effectively, yes, I think that's right. I think that um, in, in two ways. Firstly, in terms of trade, uh, they just don't want to budge an inch. Right. You, you, you know, you charge 2.5% on BMWs coming in here, but they charge 10% on your cars. And hey, that's just not a fair deal. More than that, deeper than that, and more worrying than that, is, you know, NATO, whatever its imperfections, NATO has been there since the 1940s. Uh, the USA is the absolute key player. But the second key player is, is the UK. Uh, and between us, we've, you know, we've had this alliance going for nearly 75 years. Now what the European Union want to do is build their own army. Now, they say it'll be complementary to NATO, but in reality, in reality, kind of what they're saying is we don't like America, we don't like Trump, uh, we're trying to break down all these things that have existed for so long. And it, 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 it frankly, um, it is a, an act of the most extraordinary ingratitude. You know, I've said in the European Parliament in the last few months that maybe what we ought to do is say to ourselves, if it wasn't for America, we'd all be speaking German, yeah. And we wouldn't be free countries. So it's, it's, it's a very odd psychological attitude that the EU has to America. And yeah, we're in, you know, we are in a new Cold War. The situation with Brexit is grim, as you know. Um, you, you, don't, ha you don't need to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, spoken a little bit about um, you know, your role in, in, in really stepping up your role in, in maybe forging a new, a new party if it, if, it, if it comes to that. Can you... Give us well, some, some details. I, I mean, in essence, uh, the people had a vote, uh, despite being threatened by everybody and told it would be terrible for us economically and everything else. Yeah. We were big enough and ugly enough to say, Do you know what? We want to be free. Right. We want Brexit. The difficulty is Parliament just doesn't accept that still. Hmm. And that's why two years and nine months on, we're still struggling uh, with this. this. This will come to a head in, in January. Right. Second, third week of January will be the absolute key moment where we understand where we're going. Uh, Mrs. May's negotiated a deal, but it's a dreadful deal, as we've discussed already. Right. Um, and there are then two options. One is we leave on what's called World Trade Organization rules, and that's the basis at the moment that we trade with America and China. Uh, there's nothing to be scared of, but of course the globalists are telling us that would be awful. Right. That's one option, uh, and I cross everything and hope that's what happens. And even if we do have a bit of short-term disruption, mm -hmm. because all change in life. You, you know, you move house, there's a, there's a bit of disruption. Right. Um, and I hope that happens passionately. My fear is that the establishment just do not respect the result and they're going to do their damnedest to try and make us vote again, hmm. which seems totally extraordinary, but it could come to that. And what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm preparing for every eventuality. It would be criminally negligent of me to pretend that there's no prospect of a second referendum. Right. So I'm getting ready and rebuilding the People's Army. And do you know something? If they want to take me on again, next time, it'll be no more Mr. Nice Guy from me.